marched to the beat of your own drum pretty well, I suppose. You really have. Great individualism in there. Something I'm dying to know, I know nothing about, but uh, my colleagues were very interested in this, and that is the relationship between the orchestrator, I think Arthur Morton played a big part of your life there, and the, uh, the music editor. The relationship between the orchestrator and the editor, plus something of their functions for viewers that might not understand. Yeah, that's a good question. I think that uh, well, the music editor you should take it in chrono chronology, and the music editor is the first person that comes with me. He's really is a very close uh, part of my my working relationship. And I've been working with the same person now for quite a few years, named Ken Hall, and he's wonderful. He he comes with me. And we see the picture and with the director and the producer and decide where the music is going to go. And he makes notes of where the music is going to start and where the music is going to end. And if we have any discussions about certain things emotionally the, the director wants or some effect, what can he will make notes about that? Then he goes home and he prepares these copious, what are called cue sheets, which are descriptions in action and time of each scene where the music is going to go with all the dialogue and all of the action uh, indicated. And then as I write the music, there are timings that go off in the music where the music is supposed to correspond and, and synchronize with certain points in the film. And I have to have marks on the film as we're recording. The film is being projected as I conduct the orchestra. I see. And I need guide points on the film to know where I am. I mean, I, and there are marks that go across the screen. Kenny puts all those marks in there. This is all done mathematically, and I'm very bad at math, and he's constantly checking my math to make sure that I'm correct, because all of a sudden I say it takes 10 bars to get from here to there, and that has to be uh, 27 and 2 tenths seconds. If I make a mistake in my math, I could either have the orchestra going too fast or too slow, so he makes sure that I don't make mistakes. We, we don't want to have anything go wrong when we go in front of the orchestra because it becomes very costly. And he just does that. He checks all that, prepares the film for me to record. He's at the recording session with me. And then after the music is recorded, he literally takes the, the recorded music, puts it into the film, cuts it into the... And he's there during the whole time. As the music editor. And if you make changes, which is inevitably the, the case, like the new Rambo was, uh, they were changing the pictures as I was recording it. I mean, oh. so frustration. It was, and so Kenny has to take the music after I record it because there's no time to go and change it, and he literally cuts it and sort of edits pieces it together. So that's, and so he's very, very, very important to me. The orchestrator gets a nine. The orchestrator gets a nine line sketch from me. It's like a paper like this. Okay. And like two lines are for woodwinds and two lines are for brass and two lines down here for strings and there's three lines here for percussion and harp and keyboards. And I suppose that a copyist, a good copyist, could extract the parts from the sketch, but somehow Arthur does a few little things here and there. He knows me so well. That, you know, I indicate all the instruments, what's playing and so it's really sounds intensely complicated. Oh, it isn't that complicated. Isn't it? Well, yeah. I think if you tell people how complicated they're very impressed, it's really not that it's complicated. Really, but uh, you could talk from all the years, though. Maybe that's the answer. I suppose. Specifically Freud. And I'm wondering if there was that kind of magic between you and Houston. I mean, John was, it was, you know, I was very, you know, I, I've really been very fortunate. Uh, in terms of people that I've worked with, I've, uh, Worked with you know John Houston, Howard Hawks, uh, Otto Preminger, Carol Reed. I mean these were great directors. I've gone through you know up to with Steven Spielberg, and I've had a chance to you know all the way through. So I've been very fortunate. I, I started off. I mean I, the best way I discovered is I started off with fig, with directors who were father figures, continued on with directors who were peers, and now I'm working with directors who are the same age as my children. So, you know, it's been very interesting for me. And John was, was wonderful. I was totally in awe of him. And he was, he was from boy. I was very fortunate to have done two films with him, but particularly Freud. Did. We did that picture in Rome. And that was my first trip to Europe. I was going to be deposited, you know, 32 years old. And 
in, in Rome, the most beautiful city in the world, and then have John there to act as your tour guide. I think, John, I got it working. I'm working at a massive dinner for lunch. I'm going to show you the city. It's great for that, wasn't it? And, and you know, to take you when you go to the Pantheon and sit down, get out the car. Now, close your eyes and, and take my arm and, and take me into the, this building and then say, look up, and then you see this immense dome, this magnificent dome with a hole. In the sense of drama. Well, and, and then to work with him on the film, which was not extensive because I only sat and spotted the picture for music with him and I never saw him again. Yeah. Uh, uh, but what we did, the, the time we took to decide where music goes, and there was something that I learned from him that is, it was so wise. There was one scene in the picture where I wasn't sure that music should go there. He wasn't sure that music should go there. We went back and forth and back and forth. And he said, he said look, if you're that uncertain about it, forget it. Don't put any music there because it won't be good because you don't feel it. And I said, thank you very much. And I think I try to tell the other director, I don't feel it. Why make me do it? So it was a great, it was a great time with him. A few comments, if I could, Jerry Goldsmith, on the state of film music today. Any bright uh, stars on the horizon? Your son, Joel? And Joel's doing, uh, he's a sweet boy. He's gonna, as a matter of fact, the picture we just finished, I'm doing it all electronic. He actually is Recording music, he's the mixer for me. I mean, he had to oh. get a very good mixer, he says, very talented. Well, that's terrific. That's yeah, terrific. I got him in between films. Joel is, is, is going to do all right. He's did a television show, and it's, it, you know, we'll see. Time will show. What about like Pontius and Computers today and their whole role? Well, as you can see, I'm. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And here's my trusty <laughs> Mac. And, yeah. Uh, You're right. Well, I, no, I think I think that, that a lot of composers are sort of gadget freaks too, which I guess I always was a gadget freak. I mean, I used to sit with a piano and a piece of paper, and, but now I've got a computer, and you know, I still have to. He comes right down to it, sit with the paper and put the pen and pencil to it. I hope always. I hope. Yeah, always. I think so. But you know, there's something about new technology, and uh, it gets tempting. I mean, I've always been interested in electronics. It's something I started with actually on Freud. It was very primitive in those days. You know, before we had what's called voltage control, these kind of electronic instruments. Everything was done with tape and cutting it with razor blades and very primitive way of doing it. Primitive was 20 some odd years ago. It was not long ago. I know, I know. To come with all of these instruments all have microprocessors in them. But I've been interested in it the whole time and it sort of stayed up with it. It's because it really started with something I hear that, you know, in my mind, I've always wanted certain colors, certain effects that maybe went beyond what the acoustical instruments were capable of doing. I, I was fooling around all the time with slowing tracks down and doing, manipulating it in various ways. And so that, to me, it's just sort of a natural evolution. It's not, it's not there to replace the orchestra by any means. <laughs>